Infinity Train. Look at this animation style. And look at these untrustworthy birds. Created by somebody with two first names. And we got this creepy music over the whole thing. Oh. I'm the coding hero Wisconsin needs. I don't think they want their coding hero to stink up the whole state with her onion breath. Is she eating an onion? That's amazing. Respect. I thought your game was cool when I played it, and you know how I feel about video games. What's the significance of that stick? Someone's gonna step on it or trip on it. When your dad picks you up for visits, does he come in and talk to your mom? Uh, yeah, sometimes. I guess it's Not weird often. to see your parents talking to each other now. What do you mean weird? Well, because this you took know, a dark turn. They're not married anymore, and everything is different. It's fine. Lots of people's parents are divorced. Yeah, this is America, presumably. Canada, same thing. There's such a weird vibe like permeating the whole thing. Uh, maybe it's the music. That was almost a sweet scene until like one of the friends had to rub that in her face. <laughs> I don't know if that was necessary. <laughs> the whole family life thing. She's obviously still processing it. But also visually it looks like it's gonna be like, I don't know, small town slice of life type thing. But then that's competing with like something really creepy through the music. And also I guess the coloring a little bit. It, it feels off. Something feels off. Tulip? Tulip. Tulip, it's your dad. We need to talk to you. Nah, she went upstairs. I don't know, Andy. What do you want to do? Oshkosh is the gaming camp. Okay, game. She really is eating that onion. <laughs> <gasps> Look at you! You're moving around now! Don't ever change. If only coding would really like that. Maybe it is like that. Who knows? <sighs> Not me. Tulip, I'm so sorry, but your dad can't take you to camp. Ooh, that hurts doubly. Camp and dad. Dad mixed up the dates and planned a work trip out of town. Okay, well then why don't you take me? I have a 12 hour shift at the hospital tonight and then another shift on Sunday. You can arrange someone to take her. What schedule? It's two of you and one kid. It's not that hard. And there's taxis. <laughs> Fine. This is her dream. Whatever. You gotta get her to camp. Go. No, wait. no, no. Well, let's talk about this. No, I'm going back to my- Come game. on, mom. Call a neighbor, uh, aunt, uncle. You can create your own camp through coding <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> you don't make this up with pizza. Did it say pizza or did I imagine that? <laughs> I think I just want pizza. Is she gonna just set out to camp on her own? Interesting. The aesthetic, aesthetic, is that the right word? This whole thing is so intriguing, so interesting. 300 miles is not a quick hop. You got this. <laughs> Oh, oh, there's a train here. This is the infinity train, I take it. Oh, well that's lucky. Yeah, I'll, it's very lucky, which might give some people some pause as to why what is happening. Oh, did I just hallucinate a train station? Well, that's boring. <laughs> okay. Is she in a new land? She's in a new land. I'm looking for my mother. I don't know what she looks like, though. She might be large. Or small, like a nurturing bagel. Are you looking for your bagel nurturing mother, too? No, bagel. definitely not. We're all looking not. for our bagel mothers, not aren't we? Not dad, either. I don't know. I feel like it's a devastating mistake for Tulip's parents. Like, I get that they're human beings and there are logistical difficulties, but I think you lead that conversation with, we're going to find a way to get you there, but... You know what I mean? And so she sets out to go to camp, but like it's more than that too, right? It's that she can't really face the reality of her home life. She hasn't been able to process it, which makes sense. And it seems like in a way she's doing a healthy thing of focusing on things that will make her happy or things that she sees as being good in the future, like coding and camp. And one day I'm going to do this, you know? So already you have this interesting and mixed bag of reasons and motivations for her leaving and then you have this train disappearing and seemingly taking her to some magical land but is it like an escapism thing did it hear the cry of the lost child or something like that i don't know it's intriguing weird toy so what are you looking for i'm not looking that's the question for I'm weird toys on it Oshkosh. is that your home it's where game design camp is and where my troubled home life isn't uh, ooh. this is not the normal world in case that wasn't already clear <laughs> So they're on the train. Is the train? But what is the train? What does it mean? Are we ever gonna make it to Oshkosh? Not at this rate. It's the best game I've ever made. How many games have you made? One. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> that's kind of a weird thing to joke about. That's my name. I'm one. One. And that's kind of a weird name to have. Especially when you have two voices. Ah! Well, what's this?
What is the nature of the train? This is not Wisconsin. Or is it? This is sort of the vibes I've been getting from the, the show so far, from the beginning. Yeah, this is, this is what the music is, if you know what I mean. Is this the future? Yeah, this is the stop. This is the place that you get off on this magical train. The apocalypse world with evaporating people and quicksand and whatever the hell this is. Yeah, the, the cockroach dogs. That's the world. That was amazing. That was a feat of athleticism that is rivaled only by <laughs> the top athletes. The train's not all good, but what is the train? What is he sucking her life juice? One is now two. Shook that right off. I like how she calls it one one. Do you want me to start over? This place has some stuff that's okay about it. <laughs> Everything has rules. E even crazy things have their own logic. You've been branded. I don't know if you you've realized that. Conductor. Hmm. I think we have one of those. But he would most likely be at the engine. Getting off this train. Huh, so that's the end of episode one. It's very intriguing. I'm very intrigued by this train. What exactly is it? I mean, it could be like the classic, it's Tulip's fantasy. First episodes or the first few handful of episodes always have this challenge of like trying to be interesting, trying to be entertaining enough to keep interest while also establishing so much about the world. And in just 10 minutes, the show did a really great job of that. I mean, Tulip is an interesting character. She's sharp, seems like a great kid, but is like clearly troubled, having difficulty coping with the realities of her family life and in a very literal sense running away from it right and so what you might expect is that the train is a reflection of what's going on internally and so i'm really intrigued by what the train is and what exactly it means why it showed up and also like weird questions like is it actually the real world and speaking of the show setting things up really well there's this like creepy surreal feeling to the whole thing the entire time like from the opening shots even it doesn't feel like wisconsin although i don't know if i've ever been to wisconsin so maybe that's exactly what wisconsin is like who knows? Just to take a stab at a possible idea, even though there's nothing really here to suggest this necessarily, trains, I think, are connected to certain metaphors about life, especially as it relates to, like, feelings of powerlessness and issues of choice, right? Like, I think being born, we're all essentially on something like a railroad track because birth is not a choice, right? What we're born into is not a choice and what we're born into largely affects what happens next and therefore what happens after that and what happens after that and so forth. And I think one essential element of the process of growing up is starting to see the track, you know, starting to see the train and then hopefully the seeing of it creates sort of more choice surrounding one's own life and situation. And maybe it's only in those realizations that altering that becomes possible. And while that may not be the intention at all, I feel like there there is a feeling of that, for me at least, for Tulip, who probably at this point feels somewhat helpless and powerless. She just has no say over anything, and her defining action in this episode was to leave. To actually try to do something different from the trajectory she may have felt she was on. Which, from the general atmosphere and ambiance and dialogue of the episode, doesn't seem good from her eyes, you know what I mean? It's She's sort of helpless. And so now she's on another train, which is interesting. But it also seems like she's not helpless. She's not powerless. This is a world where actually she has a lot of relevant skills, you know, being someone who's creative and adventurous, independent. So while it's really hard to pin down, the, the overall feeling I have about it is that there's a lot of potential for the train, if that makes sense. And it's called Infinity Train, right? So you might expect a lot of potential from something called Infinity Train. But that's enough rambling about things I know nothing about. <laughs> Let's watch episode two. This music, though. It was doing Stranger Things before Stranger Things. Right? Or when did the show come out? 46 down, 7 letters. This is episode 2, she's already like mastered the whole train. Look at this. You stay here, and no more writing, okay? Aye aye, Captain! I feel like there are all sorts of jokes hidden in the 1-1 thing that I'm not getting. I mean, it's 11. Speaking of Stranger Things, was she 11 or 12? I can't remember. It could also be binary. What is 1-1 one, one in binary? I'm way out of my depth here. <laughs> I'm so far out of my depth. I guess that's not obvious. Okay, this long beard. They look so peaceful. Shh, six inch voice. 1-1 one, one is often way off about his assessments. Work first, so you get to enjoy the fun later. I help my dad fix the go-karts. I get to drive them before he resells them. Work first. Okay, sometimes there was pizza during the work and hose I knew there was pizza. See? That was still under the work umbrella. 
I had her read on her dad from the very beginning. Oh, what? Nobody told me this number was gonna change. Nobody said anything. No one told her the rules. Just like life. So the train must be life then. I don't trust it. I don't trust it for one second. There are cockroach animals. Strong name for a strong man. What did we walk into here? This is inappropriate. man such as yourself can turn his pile of junk into donuts with this truly miraculous product. Tulip, leave before they do anything more with this guy's Randall's junk. Yeah, like a pyramid scheme. Don't think of it so much as a pyramid scheme as a pyramid team. <laughs> I like that. This cat's got gusto. I'm supposed to be going to Oshkosh. Do not trust Donut Cat. This number keeps going down, and if it reaches zero, I'm done for. Are we sure about that? Are they really limes? What makes you think the digits below your digits are counting down to your death? Right, right. Uh, that was a, a big one one told me? leap. Mother and check. one one is always right. Never wrong in his assessments. Mother check. C'est intéressant. Is one one about to become a donut? I'm sure the conductor would be just as sympathetic to your plight. I'd rush off to see him right now, but unfortunately, my personal shuttlecraft has been grounded. I don't know anything about shuttlecrafts, but I fixed some stuff with my dad. One thing that this episode is making clear is that she had a very tight relationship with her father, at least in some ways. It seems like some of her deepest interests and maybe, by extension, some of her personal identity was cultivated by or through experiences with her father, helping her father fix things. So that adds a little bit of color to her father's departure and also to her skill set. It's like, it's not just losing a parent in the household. Although, of course, it never really would be that simple. Just for the purposes of the character in the show, a lot of the things she might take joy from are now maybe tinged with sadness at the memory of her father and what they used to do together. Completely unrelatedly, the conductor is an interesting concept. If the train is life, right, or something like that, if it's connected to feelings of powerlessness or trajectory or loss of control, who's in the driver's seat? Is it not going to be her in some way? You know what I mean? Or some reflection of her? You know. I could take the little white ball off your hands. No, don't sell out one one. As useless as he is. Miss Tulip, we made so many donuts. No. Oh. Do you really need him, or do you want to get off this train? It's not that you need one one. It's that you don't want to be like selling, Deal. selling him. Wow, she just went and did that <laughs> really quickly. Well, uh, how much for that gear over there? Ah, expensive taste. Hold the sponge. Now that's a handsome looking flower. You mean my personal heartfelt gift that I picked out for my personal heartfelt friend? Oh, that sounds valuable. Oh, I mean, it's not really for sale. She says after she sold one one. Oh, the price we pay for the things we desire most. <laughs> my mechanical heart breaks again. If you only knew one one. If you only knew. Sit tight and I'll have the conductor sort out this whole mess. I told you not to trust this donut cat. This is dark. You may not always bring in the sales numbers I want, but you've got heart, and I feel like you care about me. I didn't not care. That cat was gonna help one one too. Probably. I don't know. I guess I don't really know anything about the cat. I just wanted right. to get off the train. Yep, me again, reading into this train thing. If it is something like the trajectory of life and you do want to get off the path you're on, perhaps selling out is not the way. In fact, I think selling out is a, is a great way to keep yourself on it because as it may turn out, it's not actually about the individual circumstances of life, although those are really important. There's another layer to it, which is like one's own self and like personal discovery and understanding and something like a personal code. You know, speaking of autonomy and not being just like a sort of a victim of circumstance, maybe one element of that that's important is not just escaping circumstances, but doing it in a way that doesn't make you feel worse about your own life. You know, having a certain autonomy of spirit and thought as well. To me in this episode, it feels like Tulip is doing something she feels to be wrong. And she's doing it because she doesn't see any other way out and she's really concerned about the conductor and her potential death. But if she's doing it for those reasons, if she's doing it purely to get off the train, then in a sense, she can't get off the train. Does that make sense? She made this very linear decision based on her position on the railroad tracks. And so she's just another step further along the railroad tracks. Nothing has changed. Slip in the cracks is my middle name. Randall, slip in the cracks, Randall. <laughs> All right. You just made a big mistake. What are you going to do, make her into a donut? Say there, you look like a smart guy. This donut. I'm so sorry I gave you to the cat. I underestimated Randall. Oh, that's... Damn, that ended abruptly. So that's Infinity Train, episodes one and two. I feel like 
This is another one of those examples of a show with a younger target demographic. I mean, it's a Cartoon Network show, right? That has a compelling character, has a very brisk pace to keep things interesting, especially with like a, you know, a very short runtime per episode, but then has all these layers that, you know, I think that with these kinds of things, even if you are not fully aware, you're still aware. I think we're probably always going to be drawn to things that have depth. I just think where it differs is just like how much you can articulate what you're experiencing and what you're seeing, you know? But I think this show has that, has that layer. And I'm really curious how deep it goes, basically. Tulip's definitely in for a ride, so to speak. The train, I mean, there's just so much potential there. I mean, it's called Infinity Train. The potential is infinite. And then you have that surrounded with, like, animated creativity, where you get, you know, maybe one-off characters. I don't know if they're one-off, like Cat and Randall. And I just know from seeing the the poster that there are more characters that are going to join, I think. So very intriguing overall. And, I mean, it's so short. We're already, like, what? A fifth of the way through the season so yeah that's the end of infinity train episodes one and two this is another show i will probably return to at some point in the future so hope to see you whatever that is <laughs>